Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Improv Gaming. This is Thursday's episode. Thursday. Thursday. And I'm joined <laughs> by this crazy gentleman over here. The craziest. Mr. I'm Wondering himself, with the door cap in tow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. Peter Anderson. What's going on, guys? What's going on with you, sir? Guys. Well, not much. Not you much. Know? We're debating, trying to convince a PSVR. <laughs> um, from seeing this, Resident Evil's been out, but 85 Metacritic as of right now of recording this. Um, I hear it's the narrative's good. The f- everything. It sounds like the VR just enhances it. I think. If Do you I, know what the narrative is? It's you're you're in a house, and basically there's all these family members trying to kill you. Yeah, that's oh, pretty much. That's it. Okay. Um, but my plan is, depending on somebody here, is 50% in VR, 50% not in VR. Unless VR really kills it, then I'm going to play the whole thing in VR. But I think 50-50 is what I'm going to do. But gotcha. We'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. He's banking on actually having VR. It's adorable. If you didn't know, I'm also joined by the best camera girl in the business. It's Miss Christine Anderson. What up, guys? Thank you for that introduction, Nick. I like him to see. <laughs> he has more love for me than you do. Talking about a sexy motherfucker. He sits across from me every week. He Thank only you. has the best ponytail in the business. It's fabulous. He only does everything. It's fabulous. He loves this new program. It's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nicholas De Jesus. How's it going tonight, everybody? How's it going, sir? Everything not, today is not, fabulous. Not too bad. It's always fabulous. You love this new recording system we're using. Oh, yeah. Absolutely love it. So much. So much. So much less work to do. <laughs> so it's, it's he, he leaves the apartment with a song in his heart yeah, and a smile yeah. on his face. I can focus on other things now. So it's nice. That's huge. It's very nice. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. I forgot so, to set the timer. back to the topic at hand. It's all right. I've got time over here. I don't need the timer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's what's wrong with open world games? Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts, Pete? Okay. Tell, so, me what, tell me what you think is wrong with open world games. It's not that everybody's doing open worlds now. And even if you don't want to... Is that to... because you feel like... See, I don't want to go off on a tangent. No, no, Sorry. no, no. Go, small, go, go. small tangent. Go, go. Is that because... Not like you get two games in one, but like to not have an open world, you almost feel like you got gypped. Is that why so many people are doing it? Like, you want to give that like, here's like yeah. hours they, and hours of, yeah. you know... They want to give that lasting impression. That yeah, way you don't go exactly. to your local GameStop and say, here, I'm training this This game was yeah. too short. I, I, yeah. I went through it in like a couple hours. Yeah. Perfect example is Final Fantasy XV. As you guys know, I've not played Final Fantasy XV. I'm not going to play it probably until May or June because I know that it's an open world that I'm going to want to take my time and explore and play and lose myself for 40, 50 hours into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Same but, I mean... Guardians wasn't that bad of an experience, right? Gears of War 4, eight-hour experience, wasn't yeah. too bad of an experience. Yeah. So it, there's a lot to be said for yeah. a good, a very well-done, very linear short game. Oh, or absolutely. Or quote-unquote short game. Uncharted 4, inside these nice condensed, you know, inside one multiple game of the years because it was three, four hours long, but those three, four hours were f- perfect. Perfect yeah. gameplay. So what's wrong with open-world games? Too many people are doing it. Too many people are doing it. That's how you feel. You feel fucking... And then... Fucking... The, Guerrilla Games comes out with an open world game. Nintendo steps up their open world game. We just had Wild Hunt that took forever. Skyrim, people are still playing to this day. Fallout 4 is an open world game. Grand Theft Auto 5 is an open world game. We're going to get Red Dead Redemption, which is an open world game. Can we get something else? That's pretty much where Pete stands. Yeah. Like, let's say in, in a month period, you know, there's like, hypothetically, like, six, like, big games that are released in the month, hypothetically. Okay. How many of those would you say are going to end up being open world? Nowadays, four out of six. Four yeah, see, six. that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It that's and, a little, and yeah. it's the, my problem, Nick and Christine. My problem with open world is some is just thrown together and not really thought about. I give you, and I know you might roll your eyes. Witcher Three Wild Hunt. Okay. My favorite open world of all time, hands down. I lost my shit in that for a hundred hours. You did. Yeah. But it was so good because the side missions matter to the main mission and if you did a side mission here it would affect the main story there if you didn't do that side mission until later it would affect a different point gotcha. you know hey am i gonna go with the count or am i gonna go with this person oh and the side mission i did the count is dead that's what i chose to do and it just it fleshed out that story so much more when and no disrespect to something like watchdogs but watchdogs it's like oh go hack this person's house yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a bad guy 
And then okay, that's it. Has it has nothing to do with the main nothing story. with the nothing with uh, Bloom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloom. Bloom. Yeah, nothing with Bloom or. Whatever. And you need a reason to do a side mission. Yeah. Which is why you need it to mean something. Yeah. And so for you, Watch Dogs, or not Watch Dogs, Wild Hunt was a better experience because yeah. the story was so interconnected with the side missions. Like it, it and the like world one cohesive universe that you yeah. were in. Exactly. Gotcha. And also, it's, it's throw show your world. Let me explain another thing. I'm going through Watch Dogs 2. Nothing, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. You play Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. You go through a meadow and you see a fucking battle with bodies on the ground. You're thinking to yourself, shit, something fucking happened here. There was a battle here. And the developers took the time to place these bodies. One to say, this was a story between our... A good and bad person, and this is what happened. It gives life to the open world, Nick. It gives I gotcha. life. I, gotcha. I feel like Horizon is going to give a life. There's all this machinery and this big world and these mysteries, and I feel like Gorilla is going to hit it out of the park because it's their first. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they're very experienced with with what they it might, takes to yeah, do. Yeah, they open might world. not because, know to walk down the because uh, Fallout does a very good job of mm-hmm. intermingling everything, where everything is related to some sense. Mm-hmm. You know, Skyrim, same thing. So, Id, Id and uh, and uh, Bethesda seem to understand. I think it's Id. Maybe it's I'm software. Wrong. I think it's Id. I think they're 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 the ones that handle it with Bethesda. I believe. I'm not sure. Um, but I think Bethesda does a great job with Skyrim and Fallout series yeah. because of the fact that it's so fleshed out and everything is yeah, so interconnected. Um, but they've had practice at that, right? Like when they got Fallout, it wasn't there, but it wasn't theirs, but it was still had this still open world mythology behind it that they could incorporate with theirs. And from there, they were able to get that Skyrim Elder Scrolls yeah. experience that was very well well thought out and everything kind of interconnected. Um, you don't get that so much with something like Grand Theft Auto or Watch Dogs. I, I just think in. Uh we gotta look at it this way. So, I, I, uh, my point being, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, Horizon is gonna bring that kind of a world to you. I'm not sure though. I'm not you sure. Know. I'm on the fence when you say that because I'm like, hmm. I understand. It could because I'm on the fence. Can, with can Tony. like a developer? Stupid question. I apologize, but I, I don't know as much as you oh, like. Oh. Can a developer like Guerrilla Games go to another developer that maybe they're kind of tied with and be like? Any pointers on? Yeah, they could oh, have they, gone they to Sucker Punch. Oh, okay. All the time. So it's yeah. not like they're going in blind. They could kind of go in with some guidelines yeah. from other go, developers that know. They what. can go to Sucker Punch, who did Infamous, which is an open world, yeah, yeah, and yeah, say yeah. we need some pointers. Okay. My yeah. My big I got problem you. with Sony is, and it's going to start with Horizon. Is a lot of all their games coming out looks like they're open world. Horizon's open world. Days Gone, open world. God of War, rumored to be open world. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these games are coming out that are open world, and it just cool but i don't want to lose what it means i mean yeah, yeah. i bring back Watch Dogs because it's the most recent one we can use um but even final fantasy i did you feel like final fantasy was populated and dense because i'm playing hitman just the first episode i walked into the paris fashion show there's npcs everywhere there's movement everywhere yeah, yeah, everybody's yeah, yeah. moving there's talking on walkie talkies i'm like okay if i go here i go there and it's just so i step back from hitman right now and go Okay, that let was me a bit f- much. <laughs> let me find my kitchen knife because you play with the kitchen knife when you play Hitman. Pointers because the kitchen knife. Do you is bring the best. it to the fashion show? Yeah, they tried to like check me. They're like, "Sir, we need to check you." And I was like, <laughs> "I have a kitchen knife and a gun on me." I was like, "I'm not gonna go this way." <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and it just feels so populated and everything's going on. But I feel like some of these now are just oh, it's open world for being open world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't take that as much for. Ubisoft, because Ubisoft's not too bad about it, but it's well, they do the standard open world process, yeah. right? Which is which is main storyline mission and then side missions that really have nothing to yeah, do exactly with with the story at all, which Pete hates. Because to me, if you're but if you're, you're a history th- buff, that's why you've probably been drawn to Assassin's Creed mm-hmm. more so than not because you're a history buff. Yeah, so, of course. So a lot of times, I did do the side missions for Watch Dogs too because some of them were entertaining, but after a while, I was like. This does nothing. When in Witcher, and she could, she can admit to this. I used to always play through the main game. Witcher was so good, I had to do these side quests. Yeah. I, I need to hundred percent. That's it. what I said. You need something that motivates you to do the side missions. And yeah, that, yeah, and I think that's the big struggle that, that everybody's getting with these, with these uh, open world games. April, um, but I agree. I think that's the that's the biggest problem that they're having is how do I keep 
the players engrossed in my in, in my side yeah. missions and everything. Absolutely. Witcher does a great job of it. Um, CG but, Project but, Red does, the- but other games don't, right? Like, like Grand Theft Auto's selling point was the o- online multiplayer. Yeah, like that's not. That's not the storyline, right? The story missions and or the side missions on Grand Theft Auto, you already know. Collect three of this or, you know, shoot this guy or, yeah. or kill this guy or blow up this building or whatever it is. Same thing with, with Watch Dogs. I think when you buy a game like Watch Dogs or Grand Theft Auto, you already know what you're in for, like Saints Row. Open world side missions aren't going to mean shit. Yeah, it's just to uh, fill stuff. When you, when you get something that is like, like Witcher, Skyrim, would you out. put Metal Gear Solid Five in that? But was it open world? I mean, they tried, but it felt very linear. It's kind of why we stopped playing it. You know, it was. I was just asking you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Feel? I don't know how I feel about Metal Gear Solid because it's it's a stealth game. It's not the same as yeah. everything else. Where you know other games incorporate different aspects, but they're just trying to incorporate only stealth. You know, like. Other like 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 for Watch Dogs, like you have stealth in there, but it's not mainly stealth. Whereas Metal Gear was this weird gray area where like it's stealth, and if you try anything else, you'll die. I just feel that open worlds are just you have to nowadays. It's everybody has to be open world. Yeah, it's yeah. like back in the day, everybody had to have a World War Two shooter. Remember when that was the thing? Yeah. Everybody put out a World War Two shooter, and it become it became stagnant. It's like, yeah, yeah, some of these are great. The Call of Duties, the Battlefields were great but back then, in 1945, but now it's starting like another Medal of Honor World War Two, yeah. and it's starting to become that with open worlds because now everybody's like, oh, open world, open world, open yeah. world. When, when do I have time to play other games instead of playing your shitty game? Yeah, your it's, shitty open world. May I ask a question? Yes. I I just just to clarify because I think I, I have a correct you know understanding, but I just want to verify. Open world is basically you have to do certain things, but it's up to you when and how you accomplish them. Like if you want to go like and do like A D C B, as long as you get them done, they don't care. Whereas kind of. linear is like no, you A B C D. What open world provides is a story that you have to follow, and that's always going to be A B C D. Right. Right. And sometimes it'll spread off to A B C D one D two D three. Okay. But you still got to complete D1, D2, D3 to get to E. Gotcha. Um, and then it'll have double A, double A, B, yeah, yeah. A, C, A, and that'll be your side mission stuff. Mm-hmm. Would be like this is stuff that you can go ahead and kind of like try to try to pick out and play around with. Um, so in closing, um, what what I'm gathering is Pete's tired of side missions not being. Intertwined, right? I'm tired of too many open worlds coming out. Absolutely, I agree with you on that. I just want a nice, dense, yeah. get me lost, not something that feels... Yeah. Because yeah. Uncharted, uh, The Rise of the Tomb Raider, Gears of War 4, all accomplish the same kind of euphoric feeling that we all get as Witcher or Skyrim mm-hmm. or Fallout. So, clearly, you don't have to be open world to provide a great gaming experience. Absolutely. What you need to do is give me something to, 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 to fall in love with, which is what Witcher does for you, which is what Fallout did for me, and it's what Skyrim has done for many of our viewers. Um, you, the people. Uh, Ooh, the but people. we've all gotten the same experience out of out of linear, very linear games. Yep. You know, um, And I know that this is like an albatross around their neck, but Final Fantasy uh, 13 to me, was a good game. I liked it. I thought it was enjoyable. Yeah. I liked the paradigm shifts. Uh, people don't really like it because it was a very linear game. And Final Fantasy traditionally has been like, okay, it's linear and then open world. Yeah. And then we go back to linear towards the end, which is what Final Fantasy has been traditionally. Of course. Um, so I think I think it's really up to the player, right? Like if you just want to kill them all and shoot them up, that's going to be your Saints Row. It's going to be your Crackdown. It's going to be your... Your Grand Theft, Auto. Grand Theft Auto, your your Watch your Watchdogs, but if you want something with meaning, behind meaning, it. I would say Final Fan, oh not Final Fantasy, uh, the fantasy realm open worlds might yeah. be where you go, right? Mm, so where yeah. you get- that's why I feel, and going back to Tuesday's episode, that's why I feel like Zelda, Zelda and Horizon's gonna do, yeah, yeah, because they're open worlds, but they're like they're let fantasy me, open yeah, worlds. They're so. fantasy. Let me show you that we have a story here. We also have things that matter. I don't see Nintendo 
having a side mission just to have a side mission. Yeah, yeah. They don't seem like that would be a thing. It would be Nintendo saying, hey, you know, if you help me do this, this, and this, I'll give you this amazing bow. I'll give you this quiver for another 40. There's incentive. It works better in the the fantasy realm than it does in the realistic realm. Yeah, no, definitely understandable. Yes, absolutely. All right. So you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to do an open world, do it in fantasy. Go to see yeah. Project Red and Poland. Go, go, go to the fantasy realm because I, I, I agree. I think, I think, open world is done much better when, when everything's inter, intertwined. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> game on. <laughs>